I am designing an assembly where I need to mount this gearbox on this mounting plate. It's been uh, quite a while since I created this gearbox and I don't remember the bolting pattern or the location of the shaft hole. But I made a template for it, a drilling template, which was a simple sketch. Let's go into it and take a look. Just a simple sketch and I labeled it according to what the holes had to be and their location off the central point. So that became a part, a drilling template, which I'll use in my design to transfer to this plate for the gearbox. Now this is not an authorized Autodesk Fusion 360 operation. It works, but it has some glitches. And I'll go over those in a second. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure my subassembly doesn't move around on me, which I brought in. And I want to ground this component, which I did. So now once that's done, I want to go into this component and locate where I want the shaft of this gearbox, this shaft to come through, which will locate the, the holes via the drilling template. So I go into this component and make it active. And I'm going to do a sketch on this surface. I'm going to put a point up here and I dimension it from the edge outside edges. The top edge is off three inches and the side edge is off seven. That will give me a location point for my drilling template which will be right there. Okay, so I'll finish that sketch and I have my point. You'll see why it's crucial to have that point in just a second. Now that I've finished that, I'll go back and make the top level active. Okay, now I want to bring in my template, my drilling template. Right click and insert into current design. It's down at the bottom. I'm just going to drag it up here a little closer and zoom up a little bit. You'll notice it's turned 90 degrees. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead real quick and turn it 90 degrees. Next thing I want to do is move that nose is on the center point because it was developed on the origin. I'm going to switch over to point to point, pick on that point, and then pick on the point I just placed. Now you'll see the only points you have available are on the outside edges and the dead center. But I wanted it at a different location. That's why I had to do that point. So I pick there and say OK. Now I'm ready to start drilling holes, but there's a little bit of a problem. You cannot get the sketch of a linked component to show up in the hole command. So I must break the link. So I right click on that component and break the link. Now that sketch will become available and I can use it with my hole command. Before we drill our holes, we want to be sure and put them in the right component. So we go down to that component again, which happens to be the plate, and make it active. I need to make the sketch of the template be sure it's active so I can see it also. Go up to my hole command, and I'm going to pick on multiple holes and pick the outside three. These are clearance holes for a bolt. It's going to be an M10. I'm going to do DIN M10. And now another thing you'll find out, it will not work with all. This method will not work with all. It gives you an error. So here's what you do. Set it to 2 and then pick the back of the plate like that. That sets the distance and switch back to distance. That'll work. That's the only one that'll work is distance. That's another pe peculiarity of this system of using templates. Say OK. So there I have my three outside holes. I need one more, the 30 millimeter hole in the center. So I pick on that center point right there. And I'm going to switch to a plain old hole. And it's going to be 30 millimeters. This is an inch of centimeter, so I have to put the mm and say OK. So I have all my holes that I need to locate the gearbox. I'm going to turn that sketch off. So it's not in my way. Now I'm still in that plate. So I want to go back to my assembly. 
getting ready to set the gearbox. Okay, I'll now go out and get the gearbox and insert it to my assembly. It takes a second to load. There it is. I'll close my data panel. I'm going to move it up here out of the way. Notice it's sitting with the legs in the wrong position, so I'm going to rotate it at 90 degrees and say OK. Now, this, shaft, this mounting post will go in that hole and the other two over here, and the shaft will automatically go in place. So I'm going to use my joints, and I'm going to use a revolve joint. I have to use revolve because I'm going to revolve around the first hole. So revolve, and I'm going to pick on this first uh, post for my first point. Make sure I get it right. Go back to my view and zoom up for this point right there and say OK. Now I need to turn around again and do another joint for the top. I'm going to use the top post, which becomes the bottom one as I flip it around. So a joint, again revolve on this post. Be sure I get to center. Go back to my view and place it on the bottom hole and say OK. And as you can see, it's in position, ready for bolts, and the shaft sticks through just perfectly. So now I want to show you the another peculiarity of this method you need to get under your belt. What if I made a wrong location of those, those holes? Unlike regular hole centers, if I move them, the holes follow, it will not follow the template. So here's the proper procedure for doing that. What you want to do is I'm going to go to the template and first thing I'm going to move it manually down. I just determined that I need to move the box down four and a half, four inches, excuse me, four inches. So there you go. I'm going to turn that sketch on. You see it's down there and the holes did not follow it. So that is one of the weird things about this method, but it's easy to correct. Let's get about that process. Okay, the first thing you want to do is put your activity or make the component that contains the holes active. You'll see the two holes down the bottom, one for the 30 millimeter, one for the 10 millimeter, and you want to highlight them both with the control key and delete them. You'll get a warning, just accept it and continue. Now, you need to go up here and make that sketch of the template visible if you don't see it. I can see mine. I'm going to put a couple new holes in there again. So I'll capture my position. I'm going to turn off the gearbox to make it a little easier. I'm going to pick on this hole, this hole, and this hole. I probably should do the other ones first. Let me cancel that because it's already set to that. I'll do the 30 millimeter first. And then I'll do the holes again and pick on the other three and switch back to clearance holes. The distance is still set because I just did it. You may have to set the distance again, DIN M10. Say OK. So I now have my new holes. I'll turn off that sketch and you'll see that they are. Now I'll turn the gearbox back on. It hasn't moved yet. That's our next step. Make the top level active again. Now you'll see you got two joints that are out of date. So pick on both of them with the control key and drag them after the holes. Now click on the first one and edit it. Edit the joint and you'll see you're missing a reference. And it's the reference for the first post. So all you have to do is pick the new hole. It'll move down. Now click the next one. Add the joint, you'll see it's missing a reference. You want to pick the bottom, that was the bottom post. And now it updates. That's how quick it is. Even though it doesn't move automatically, it's not a hard thing to, when you move your template. I hope you can see why making a template for future drillings is very easy and a quick way to get in designs that you have to remember bolting patterns. Thank you for watching.